Hi, it's Joe here from Mint Testing Kit. If you purchase one of our Mint Testing Kit, it'll come with a sterilized swallow, it'll come with a test cassette, liquid buffer, template, and all the instruction you require to become a confident Mint Tester. The big question is, does it actually work? I'll get you to go down to the next YouTube video and then the following that and you find out yourself. If you even go further, it'll tell you how to measure the residue. Is there a demand for a self-testing kit? Simply Google Met Testing Cowboy. Met Testing Ripoff. It'll tell you all the horror stories. I'm going to be starting to test this, so I'm going to be putting some gloves on. Now, the buffer, give it a good shake when you start, um, you want to test. And we're going to use one of the sterilized swab to soak it in there. So, recommendation is around 30 seconds. And you need to dip this into the swab. Now, all the instructions as we got in here, it's going to be in the photos on TradeMe. So go down to the photos and you'll see all that. Or our website will also display all that instruction. So while this is dipping in here for around 30 seconds, I'm going to show you what's a good spot to swap. Okay. In a kitchen, it's really, really important because there's a heat and there's water. So if they're going to be cooking, they're going to be cooking here. So that's one very, very important thing not to miss is the kitchen. And where does we go in the kitchen? Up here, the back of the ranger. Take the filter off and swab it inside. That's also a good spot. Now, window frame by the stove. Another one in here, at the back. That's where the steam goes. Now, ceiling. It's another um, place to swap. Near the door, another window frame here. And wall and ceiling. Now coming to a window or if you're near a bedroom, same thing. Window frame, wall and ceiling. If you're near a door, Long there and along here. Those are a good spot to swap. Now, this has been 30 seconds, so I'm ready to swap. I'm going to have to discuss to you, this is going to be a first initial swap. Okay? So you can actually do two ways of swapping this. One is the initial swap, and the second one is a detailed swap. Now, initial screening is used when you're going to a house, you don't know any history of the house, you just want to find out a yes and no answer. Okay? Um, so, we're going to start swabbing here. Okay? So, I'm going to start swabbing the window frame and swab as much coverage as you can. As I'm telling you, you only need to know yes or no. So, we want to cover as much area as we can. So, start swabbing here. And one more thing, when you're going to be using this as an initial screening, this is the first test. Always swab above shoulder heights. And the reason for that is you might have a cousin or a neighbor who's, you don't know their meta addiction. And they can come here and touch all this lower area, all the high traffic area, like this area and this area, and you start swabbing there. And what happens, what's going to happen? That's going to come up positive. So, the first swab, we would always recommend you to swab above shoulder heights. So you don't get a false positive result. Because up here, they, have, they will hardly touch it and it's very likely to get more accurate So This is only the first swab. You can keep dipping this in here, it doesn't matter, as I said. This is only a first swab to say yes or no answer. And this is what you call an initial screening. So go around the area and we would recommend one of these uh, to get one area. If you can make two areas, feel free, but 
I would recommend one per area and swap as much as possible to get a more accurate result. So I'll go along the area and just quickly put swab. I would also recommend, if you're going to, 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 to be testing, is to use the high sensitivity test or the mid sensitivity test for your first swab. And, and, I, and, and the reason for saying that is if you use a 1.5 microgram, sometimes it won't pick up the, 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 um, the lower residue. Okay, if you get a tenant who's just moved into your property and you're doing a three monthly check, what happens if they're smoking in the first three months? The residue will be quite low. If you're using the 1.5, it simply won't pick it up. So when they start smoking, what's going to happen next? They're going to start cooking. And after cooking, what's going to happen? They're going to start selling by the time it's too late. So the first test above shoulder heights and use the high sensitivity and the mid-range sensitivity. And that way, you're quite safe. Now, if you're using this swab, don't use it pointy like this. You need to scrub it along here and turn it around and cover as much coverage as you can. So we're going to do it like this and you can go like this. So now, yeah, just keep dipping it and keep doing it until you're pretty much happy the area that you swab has covered everything you want. So remember, above shoulder heights for the first test and use a high sensitivity and a mid-range. Okay. The recommendation is to leave this for at least a minute before it says. We're going to open this um, test kit right now and I'll show you what a negative result looks like. Now, after a minute, give it a good squeeze and just keep dipping it and keep pulling it, keep dipping it. We want all the residue to go down in the buffer liquid. Okay. Now we're ready to test. So we're going to put this aside and, and put the cup back. Now, you're going to have to shake this for 30 seconds. Okay, give it a rest for another 20-30 seconds and we're going to start testing shortly. So, I've been living in this house for quite a while and there's no met activity in here. Okay, so that should give us a good negative result. So open the, the top cup and we're going to put three drops in the S area. So that's one. We're going to leave it for five seconds interval. Do the second one. Two and three. Now, out of that thing, you will get three results. You're going to get a positive result where a, uh, the control line's got a big mark line in there. Okay, that's a positive one. Now, negative results, which we're going to get shortly, is going to have two dark lines in there. Now, the line has to be very, very dark to confirm it's positive or negative. So, two dark line is a negative. T line is a test line, C line is a control line, and S is a sample drop. So, you need to watch out for the T line. C should always have a line. Now what happens if you get something like this where the T is actually um, partially um, lit? So it's quite faint in there. That means to say, MET is present in there and it haven't reached the cutoff level. 
So if you, uh, if you for example, are using a uh, 1.5 microgram um, to test, so that looks like uh, a 1 or a um, 1.2. Yeah? It haven't reached 1.5, that's why it's coming up like that. Now, looking at this sample right now, now you can see that the T line is really, really dark. You can see how dark that is. Okay? That's a sign of a negative um, result. See, the C line will come up darker later. Now, you only have to do this within 5 to 10 minutes. After that, the result is invalid. Now, this result is negative. What, is, what happened next? For confirmation, once you've done the top, you start doing the bottom. The high traffic area, such as handles, kitchen handles, stove, all the switches on the range hood, light switches, everything on the lower area, including all the door handles, and you can even swap in here. Do another round for it. The reason for it is just confirmation and verification. We want to make sure there's no mint at all in the house. What happens if it's positive? This time we're going to have to use this. And you're going to have to use a 1.5 microgram. Now, you need to get a 1.5 microgram test, which is the New Zealand standard, one of the um, cassettes. Pretty much the same way, but you're only going to be swabbing in there and give it a test. Now, same thing, you're going to get three results, a positive, a negative, and a partially contaminated. For partially contaminated, which is, I'm going to be pointing it again, which is a faint line on C, dark, it's got a C line, I would still consider that as positive, because um, using the 1.5, that's already quite a high result and that's coming up with a very very low sensitivity and it's coming up with a bit of a met in there I would still recommend to get a laboratory test done in that one now we can offer that services as well now after you um, buy this um, from trade me or from our website simply you can pick it up straight away Our phone number or our contact details will be automatically emailed to you. Just give us a good text. And we'll reply within five minutes where you can pick it up. Now during business hours, usually it's along Albany, near the, the Westfield shopping mall. Um, we'll give you the address when you um, text us. And on the weekends and on after hours, it's in Green Heights, North Shore, Auckland. And if, you wanna, if you're out of Auckland, if you pay before 3 p.m., um, be very likely to get it next day. Once again, it's Joe here from Med Testing Kit. That's our website address, which is medtestingkit.co.nz. And our email address is medtestingkit at gmail.com. And our phone number is 022-045-3682. Thank you very much. Bye.